Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I am here with another C Sharp tutorial to you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with how to copy, delete, and swap files using C Sharp. So let's get right into it. So in our main method, we've got two strings: file one and file two. One is diary.txt and another one is PokemonList.txt. Then we've got three method calls copy file, delete file, and swap files. And we're going to get into implementing them in a moment. But firstly, go to your bin debug netcore app 3.1 folder. If you're using the Visual Studio IDE, this is where your application runs from. So if you just want to have a file name as your file path, you can put your files in here. And we've got two files, diary.txt and pokemonlist.txt. So let's look at them. So we've got in diary.txt a list of Genshin Impact characters. Archon Bennett, Child, Kachingaling a Ding Dong, Water Bennett, Child's Penis, Boom Boom Girl, Miss Two for One Funeral Deals, and then some actual Genshin character names. Let's close that. And in Pokemon list, we've got a list of all the best Pokemon. These are objectively the best Pokemon out there. As you can see, the list is very diverse and very accurate. With those files shown, let's get right into implementing our methods. So our first method is going to be a public static void. So we're not going to be returning any values. It's going to be called copy file. And we're going to have a string and it's going to be file to copy and another string, a new destination. So these will be file paths that we're going to pass into our method. And the first one's going to be the file we wish to copy. And the second one is going to be where we want to put that copy of the file. So this is the code for our copy file method. Firstly, we've got a try catch statement. So we try a bit of code. If something goes wrong, we execute what's in the catch statement. Otherwise, we just move on with our lives. And inside the catch statement, we're going to do console.writeLine E. And E is our exception. So we can print out the error message to help debug the code. And inside the try statement, we're going to do file.copy, at file path to copy, comma, at new destination. So we're going to be passing in our two strings that are our parameters for our copy file function. And essentially, the first parameter in the file.copy function or method is going to be the file path or the string for the file path of the file we want to copy. And the second one is going to be where we want to put our new file, which is a copy of our other file. And then we're going to print out that um, the file has been copied. And you might be wondering, why have I put at symbols before the file paths? Well, it basically makes the strings verbatim, which allows us to put text inside of the string that would otherwise be treated differently by the compiler. So let's say you had some folders, so you had to include some slashes. Well, if you didn't put the at symbol in front of these, you would have to do a double slash every time you wanted to have a single slash. But if you put the at symbol before the file path string, or any string in general, then it will be interpreted as just one slash if you put in one slash. I know that's a really simple explanation that doesn't go into too much detail, but that's why we put in the at symbol. It's basically so we can literally type slash and have it mean slash, as opposed to having to put two slashes to mean one slash. Our next method is public static void delete file string file path. This is essentially a method we're going to be using to delete a file. And this string is going to be the file path of the file we wish to delete. So inside, we're going to do another try catch. We're going to do try and catch exception E. And in the catch, we're going to do console.writeLine E. Then inside for try, we're going to do file.delete at file path. And then after we're going to print, file deleted. And the reason why we're doing this in a try catch statement is if something were to go wrong, the program would, wouldn't crash to make the user experience a bit more friendly. The last method is public static void swap files, string file path one and string file path two. So file path one is the first file and file path two is the second file. And what we're going to do is we're going to swap the contents of those files around. 
So everything that's in file path 1 will be in file path 2. And everything that will be in file path 2 will become part of file path 1. And this is the code for our swap files method. So firstly, we've got a string temp file and it's going to be our temporary file because when we're doing a swap, one way we can go about doing this is creating a temporary file to store the contents of one of the files we wish to swap. So we're gonna call it temp.txt. We will be deleting this file eventually. So it doesn't really matter what the name is, but obviously it shouldn't be the same name as one of the files you wish to swap because that could make things a little messy. After that, we've got another try catch statement. And with exception E and const.write line E in the catch statement to print out any errors. And now this is where you're gonna want to pay attention and maybe take out your notebook and make some notes. If you're bad at visualizing stuff in your head and don't worry, there's gonna be an animation to go along with it. What we're going to do is to swap the data in the files. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move file path one, all the contents inside of that, into the temporary file. Then we're going to move all of the contents in file two to file path one. And then we're gonna move all the contents that's in the temp file into file path two. And as established before, the contents of temp file is going to be what was in file path one before we started the swap. After that, we're going to actually call our own delete file method and actually delete the temp file. As the name suggests, it's a temporary file to temporarily store the contents of one file while we do the swap. Let's say we didn't have a temp file. If we were to try and do this swap, when we put the contents of file path 2 into file path 1, the contents of file path 1 would get overwritten. So then if we were to put the contents of file path 1 into file path 2 after doing that initial swap, we'll just be putting whatever's in file path 2 into file path 2 because what was in file path 1 originally was deleted. Which is why we have a temp file. This is also something we do with a simple swap function like maybe in a bubble sort. And then we delete the temp file because we don't need it anymore. It served its very short purpose. And after we print, file swapped. And that's it for the code. Hopefully if that made sense, maybe go through it a couple more times if the concept of swapping is a bit much. So let's go back to our main method. So firstly, we are going to comment out delete file and swap files because we want to demonstrate these things one by one. So we're going to hit control S to save and we're going to do copy file, file one, which is diary.txt. And we're going to have a backup called diary backup.txt. So we hit control S and then hit the play button. As you can see, it said file, file copied. So let's look at our folder and see if it's there. As you can see, there is a text file called diary backup. Let's click on it. And I'll let you guys judge this for yourselves, but we've got the contents of diary backup and diary. As you can see, they look the same. We successfully copied the diary file and sent all the contents of that file into a new file called diary backup. I'd say that's a success. Now, let's uncomment delete file, diary backup.txt, and then comment out copy file. What's going to happen with this code is we're going to delete that backup we just made. So let's hit play. It said file deleted. That's good. Let's close that and check the results. As you can see, diary backup.txt can't be found. I'd say that was also a success. Now let's comment out delete file and then uncomment swap files. So what's going to happen here? Well, Diary.txt is going to contain a list of the best Pokemon ever, and PokemonList.txt is going to contain a list of Genshin Impact characters. So, let's hit play and see what happens. So it says file deleted and file swapped, and you might be thinking, what's going on here? But remember, in our swap files method, we actually call our method of delete file, and that method does print out file deleted, meaning that, that the temporary file got deleted and the other files got swapped. So don't let that little message confuse you. Let's check the results. Diary.txt has Quagsire printed everywhere. That's good. 
it's the best Pokemon in existence. And Pokemonlist.txt contains some Genshin Impact characters. So the files were swapped successfully. I also don't see a temp.txt, meaning the temporary file did get deleted. So that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. And thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.